In this section of the Ananti analysis, we take a deeper look at the characters. Let's start with the characters that appear on the ship. We have four major characters in Captain, Boy, Girl and Woman, and two minor characters in Sailor and Auctioneer. Let's start with Captain and Boy, the father and son pair. For most of the play, Boy is portrayed as innocent, naive and compassionate, while Captain is ruthless and stern, seeing the slaves as cargo, as similar to cattle. Boy sees them as people and struggles to understand why they are treated like this. Also, while we see that Captain's way of thinking is quite linear, in that he adheres unquestioningly to the way things are, Boy is seen asking questions, reflecting in his diary, and restlessly seeking to address his sense of confusion and ignorance. Captain's job is not just one of manning the ship and managing the crew and cargo, but also of training Boy to one day replace him. Due to this, he becomes increasingly frustrated at his son's compassion for the slaves and insatiable curiosity, which makes the two even more estranged with each interaction. Due to their stark difference in views and personality, we can consider Boy and Captain to be contrasting characters, as they are each other's opposite in many ways. Even though Boy and Captain are contrasting characters, they can also be seen as a single character on two opposite ends of a chronological continuum. What I mean is, Boy may just be Captain's past self, while Captain might be Boy's future self. In that, every Captain was once a Boy, perhaps just like this one, kind and curious. And every kind and curious Boy eventually grows up and loses their innocence, adhering to the constructs of this cruel world. This makes sense when you look at how Boy eventually becomes much more like Captain by the end of the play, even taking on Captain's duties. The other pair of characters are girl and woman. Girl is in many ways a character that is parallel to boy, in that they are both children whose destinies seem to be set before them. In that way, they are both slaves. Also, they both start the story in a state of confusion, and both ask many questions in an effort to understand the world around them, and also the position they are in. Girl at first is terrified, frightened of the white men, the dark ship, the thought of never seeing her family and home again. Anyone would be frightened in this situation, not to mention a child. However, girl shows a spirit of determination and cleverness and proves to be a fast learner as she gleans from women, taking interest in their Nancy stories. Woman, on the other hand, from the play's beginning, plays the role of a kind of mother, a sage, a guru. She is calm and collected and very wise. Even in this situation, she does not portray or encourage a spirit of anger and vengeance, but rather one of compassion and understanding. As woman grows physically weaker, being sick, she pours her strength into girl, allowing girl to grow strong. Woman's strength is transferred to girl through the stories she passes on, through the lessons girl learns from her. As we look at woman, we can see what girl may become if she lives long enough. By the end of the play, we see that girl indeed becomes much like woman in terms of the resilience and wisdom gathered, along with the ability to tell a good Anansi story. Next up is Sailor, who acts as a mentor and companion for Boy. He gives Boy a little more room to talk and ask questions than Captain does, but in the end, Sailor does nothing more than reinforce Captain's ideals. Sailor, like Captain, sees the slaves as beasts, as cargo, not as people. Then we have Auctioneer, who appears at Kingston Harbour. His only role is to moderate the selling of the sales. Next, we move on to the characters over in the Forest of Stories. We will only deal with the most important characters. The most important character is of course Anansi. We've talked about him quite a bit already. In summary, Anansi is the character who represents the idea that the small and underestimated, the underdog, can somehow defeat those who are bigger and mightier. Anansi uses trickery and wit not only to overcome, but also to totally embarrass the other forest creatures. He even defeats a human in the final story, quenching her thirst. Anansi is himself an embodiment of the fighting spirit of the slaves, the hope they have to use their wits to somehow defeat or at least escape their slave masters. As you look at Anansi, we must also look at Tiger and Snake. These are big, strong creatures 
who always end up being outsmarted by Anansi. They create opportunities for Anansi to show off how smart and manipulative he is. Besides Anansi, Soliday is the only character who is seen to be something of a conqueror in the forest of stories. In fact, he is more virtuous and more heroic than Anansi. He courageously takes on and vanquishes the dreadful Mankro. While Anansi may represent our ability to rise above insurmountable obstacles through cunning and wit, through trickery and deception, Soliday represents our ability to overcome evil with good through righteousness, virtuousness, and determination. It can be argued though that one needs to balance courage with wit and principle with artfulness. I say this because even though Soliday defeats Mankro, he was himself tricked by Anansi. We can't speak of Soliday without mentioning Gran. Another human, Gran serves a similar purpose to woman. Just as woman teaches girl, Gran teaches Soliday, giving him the tools he needs to slay Mankro. Gran and woman together show us the role of the matriarch. They are both elders who are strong and brave, who fulfills their responsibility of passing their wisdom on to the next generation. Her and Mankro are also important. They are both wicked, dreadful, and feared. They both might represent the looming, overwhelming problems we face. They represent for the African slaves, the masters, or perhaps even slavery itself. However, both villains end up being defeated, indicating that these great evils can be overcome. And that is it for the important characters of the play. In the next video, we'll move on to the themes explored in the play. By the way, who do you think is the most interesting character? And is there anything important that I missed about any of the characters? Do me a favor and let me know in the comments. Alright, see you in part 4 of this analysis.